on today's Man of the Apes. We're going to have some gin martinis in a little bit. The Green Lit the Sequel Without a story in mind They just wanted to equal An unexpected goal of mine said, oh no, as Heston said I got to go These are just some of the facts you ought to know as we go Beneath the Minute of the Apes Beneath the Minute of the Apes Beneath the Minute of the Apes Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Ape movies, one minute at a time. Boys, we're here. The last it is the final week. It's Todd, last... Richard, and Sean. Here we are. <laughs> right. There are martinis on the table, ready to be made. We continue our tradition that as we go along, we celebrate. Mm-hmm. We've made it through two movies by Friday. We'll be done. I know this is it. All right. So raise, Mon- a, raise a beer. In- yeah. Con- <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, raise a beer for this one. Then the, the next episode of the episode, if that'll be a martini. Yeah. Awesome. From, from that point there forward, we, we do not promise that anything will sound like the anything more than slurred words. Yes. But, so right. we start off Monday by calling out to go to see all of the rest of the movies by Minute Family. There's so many of them out there. They're doing exactly what we do, fighting their way through. Sometimes not the best of movies, but they love that series so much. So go to moviesbyminute.com, find them, support them, let them know that you're there. Sean, what's going on with this minute? All right, we're going to start minute 91 with Ursus looking at the bomb and the telepath and ends with Ursus saying, we'll pull it down. And here comes this minute of Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Arrest that creature. This is the instrument of my God. He could speak. You got it, eh? Roger. Your God didn't save you, did he? Huh? Ashes! Ashes like a man! That weapon is built by man! You can't shoot it down with only a clip of bullets! We can't shoot it down, we'll pull it down! All right, as of minute 91, we have two living humans, a psychor of telepaths, five dead humans, one dead ape, bunches of dead telepaths, a shrewdness of apes, and a gaggle of humans. I mean, bunches of dead telepaths. I know. I mean, they're just getting decimated. That just oh. means removed by 10%. Yeah. Okay. So we're in the cathedral. We have apes everywhere. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of apes everywhere. I actually thought that was really cool just to see them kind of I all too. pour in behind them. Like we saw ants? them. Like, we saw them on the outside of the door trying to bust in. Mm-hmm. But in this moment, we actually see them all filing in behind. It was just kind of an impressive force. And it's the one time that I'm actually going to say I think they arranged the shot correctly with the crappy masks, mm-hmm. at least far enough far, back, back yeah. that it. Took me a little bit to go. Oh, there's one. There's the horrible one. But it's such an exciting shot, and then we get Ursus throwing out what immediately baffled me. Arrest that creature. I realize there are apes everywhere, but do you have jurisdiction upon exactly. this? That area? was my note. Arrest that creature. Aren't you out of your jurisdiction? I was like, seriously, uh-huh. I, arrest. He and he also doesn't capture, seem... seize, uh, but arrest is a very uh, odd I concept. See, I see. I see. What you're saying. Okay. Okay. It took me a second. Like, what do you mean? Also, like, he's more about? military, and it'd be more likely they. Kill that creature and say yeah. arrest that creature. Right. It, you, yeah. So so he, Mendez is at the in the cathedral. They've poured into the cathedral. He's at what appears to be some type of control panel for the bomb. Right. I think we didn't we see Verger use it at some point to make it raise and lower. Yes. Yeah. Early on in the film. So so we have a sense that this is something to do with the bomb itself. Uh, and it. it oh, sorry, I was sorry. I was going to say. So they pour in yet yeah, arrest that creature. I don't really understand. They're killing a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Why would they want to capture or arrest this one? Yeah. They're def- they definitely have no sense of what's behind him at this moment. Right. They just see him standing on top of what would be an altar in a church. So I, like so many things in this film, I find a lot of the rationale confusing. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have the arrest. That's confusing. What then ensues, because as we heard in the minute, Ursus 
basically turns to a dude, which the way that stage, the guy that played Ursus, I'd be shocked if he didn't have the crap scared of him when the guy shoots off the gun. Because even if those are blanks, <laughs> right that's next to right him, yeah. by him. Yeah. I'm shocked they let him shoot that. But, okay, the logic would say from earlier, Taylor was so obsessed with this being the doomsday bomb, right? Yeah. He's obviously terrified it's a planet killer. Mm-hmm. He has a rifle on his head. Why, hand? Why isn't he the one that kills Mendez? Which would then expose from... it to the apes. We would then have true drama as to what what they were fighting about. Yeah. But instead, Ursus just kills him. D- well, gets d- the guy to kill him. Well, does does do Taylor and uh, Brent have a sense that he is at a control panel? I mean, if they don't, I think Taylor does. Oh, I, think, I, I, think, I, I think Brent would because if he saw Verger move it around, he would know that would operate the situation. So. Why wouldn't they want to go ahead? You're right. Why wouldn't they want to go ahead and, and kill Mendez? I, 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 when when he says arrest that creature, there are two apes that kind of begin to go up the steps toward Mendez, mm-hmm. um, and then that's when Mendez says, "This is the instrument of my god." Right. And of course, we get the one a guard kind of going, "He, he can, can speak. speak." Yeah. I thought for he a second. Can dance. I thought <laughs> he for, can sing. I thought for a second that that was Lucius just because of the <laughs> because of the higher yeah. because of the higher voice that yeah. that he was actually he using, speak. but he was a chimpanzee and not a gorilla. All right, Golly, keepers. Um, that's good. But that's the good. use of that voice made me think of that. What I found interesting at that moment is that Ursus was not shocked by a talking human. Oh yeah. Well, well, technically, Ursus. I would think we didn't see him in the first film, but he's high up enough in the that echelon. Maybe they of, would have discussed it. Somehow. Yeah, that he at least knew of it. Maybe he was in a scene we didn't, or a, a moment with Taylor. We didn't well, also, saw the camera. Or something. Also, we. I don't think it's a secret because Taylor spoke in public. You know, get your damn, get your damn. Oh, hands okay, that's a good eight. point. It would so have been circulated. It's already circulated talk, that yeah. they're ta- a talking human at least, right. and that may be why Ursus was already prepared for this entire thing because he realizes human might, might, humans might talk. So he's not initially, right. he's that's not true. shocked like somebody who'd never seen it before. I, I find it odd in the moment that Zaius isn't. <laughs> You know, being overly pious with his, you know, what we heard from the first film about the the place of humans, that he's not one to say, shoot, kill this creature, kill this abomination. If you think about the first film, I would I could see that he now thinks, oh, shit, there's more than there's everyone. And these have really good tailors, too. Yeah. So we got to kill them. It's on par with ours. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so about, in the moment of him saying, you know, uh, arrest that creature and the two guards going up and then getting a little bit of shock moment where like, uh, this is the instrument of God, he can speak. Mendez actually has an opportunity to go ahead and depress the green crystal yeah. and then the topaz crystal. And you're like, Jor-El somebody stop him. Somewhere. Like yeah. if I were, if I were like, well, it's, it's, and that's where I, when I watched that, I thought if I'm Taylor, even if I don't know that those crystals are controlling the bomb, I begin to think. Oh, hang on! The Vegas lights beneath the crystal make me think something, and I'm going to yeah. shoot him. I okay. I, I will. I, it is. It is not in this minute. I don't think. I don't believe. But uh, Brent is the one that uh, Taylor points at a couple things. Brent is the one that does something. I don't think Taylor is smart. All there. <laughs> I, I, I don't think. I think so? Taylor is still in shock. Okay. Related to Nova. Okay, I, 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 that. I still think Taylor is screw it all. Let's all go to hell. I, I just he his well, his, we know he didn't intera- like humanity in the he first. Has, movie. He has a lot of pauses in the coming minutes where there's opportunity for him to do something where he just kind of sits there and looks a little befuddled. It's not until we get to the final moments that he actually reacts. I don't. I think that's a great thought. It at least gives him motivation as to why he is in the place and what he does. I When we get to the latter minutes this week, I was trying to figure out if you're thematically sticking with what the films have been about, what really should Zayas and Taylor said to each other? Because mm-hmm. I, I really think if you're going to do what's obviously going to happen, it should come down to a battle of wills, a battle of, of I, I, ideas. Ideology. Yeah, ideology. Couldn't think of the word. Ideology between Zayas and Taylor. And I think they miss an opportunity with this, but at least if that's the case— you know, then I would love to see in a visual element the dog tags that he, you know, we talked about he should have taken the dog tags back from Nova. And if he just were to hold them and rub them in his hand for a minute, we would get, I'm thinking of Nova, I don't care anymore. It, I he, wish we had that. Well, okay, so so at the 15-second mark, right after Mendez uh, presses down on the Topaz crystal, I say it's Topaz because in the script it's called oh, Topaz. Oh, wow. I wondered. I thought you were just being very discerning being about very, your crystal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 
we do get a shot at the 15 second that has a quick cut of uh, Brent and Taylor side by side. Mm -hmm. Then a quick shot of them behind in which Brent is a little bit lower and he appears to be trying to move as if he's off. And then a lingering shot on Taylor where he just looks befuddled, mm -hmm. confused, and they 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 hold His here for default a default emotions. They hold here for a couple of seconds, which either makes me think that he's hatching a plan, or he really is just indifferent to everything that's happening. So that when I saw that, I w I was brought to the mind that he had talked about the doomsday element of this that that he's contemplating. Oh my God, they have this. What are we going to do? To stop it, because regardless, you know, you don't, most people don't want to die. We, most of us want to find a way to survive. We want to find some solution. And usually in a film like this, you know, it, when Taylor and Nova wrote off before, it was to hopefully find greener pastures where they could live. Yeah. They saw the desperation when he saw the Statue of Liberty. I, I expected that to be what his propulsion was in this moment was to try and find a way to stop the bomb from going off. Now, if, if we were, if we were just going by the script, in its its literal sense, Brent and Taylor are not even in this moment. In the script? Mm -hmm. That's funny you say that. But they don't I, pop up until the next minute. I've, okay. I found that a number of the shots, especially, so when we talk about a plan between Brent and Taylor, I find that plan to be non-existent. Have, I don't I mean, understand what's going on. They, they weren't even... They, they, they didn't discuss even, it with each other. They just read each other's minds and knew what they were going to do. They, they start they, pointing they, at things. Yeah. They hand you know the club and they change the gun. And I was like, okay, why? Yeah. They, they they don't even come until the next minute. So uh, it, and they don't even come into the cathedral until the next minute. Well, and to that point, this that in the that, script that at least makes sense because this felt very oddly inserted, and in, in, even in, to the extent when you see the the organ, mm -hmm. that's a very grainy shot, which says yeah, to me that was not the initial shot. Yeah. They zoomed it oh, optically, they did, yeah, yeah. And to make it stand out a little more, right? So that you knew where they where were he was going go and how they were located. But how right. how how uh uh. I want not boring. How 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 little impact would it have had to put Zeus and Ursus and Mendes in a show down without having your two protagonists in the room? They do show up in the next minute, but they they needed to be in this moment. They do, even though they're not really doing anything. But at the same time, if they had developed a little bit more of the actual, you know, things that we've talked about, where if the telepaths and the apes actually had a true struggle. That's what you want. You want to see our two apes going against the person that's now their struggle. Because really, they've had no struggle with Brent and Taylor. Brent and Taylor are just kind of on the periphery looked in, looking in. With, with, all, yeah, with both of these factions at this point. So uh, we get the 17-second the the mark. We get that kind of lingering shot on Taylor. And then uh, Mendes has finished pressing the Topaz pistol <laughs> button, as it's called in the script. And he stands up. And turns and faces the gorillas. And as he does that, we then get a, another shot of Ursus and Zeus, and they seem to notice the missile now behind him. Because then we get a shot of the missile actually rising up, a just very by phallic. Itself. Type yeah, thing. well, well, it, and it's just rising up. And then we get another quick shot of we get a bunch of shocked faces. We yeah, we get a cut huh? back to that. Uh -huh. Mendes uh -huh. is just sitting there, and you mentioned the gunfire, and. What I found really, really odd about this is, I, I had they been using machine guns before? There were machine guns. If you look around, because I that's something because Sean had asked me about what rifles they based yeah. that on the first one. So I looked at it, it was some kind of something carbine that was a World War II, and so I noticed that this was vastly different. And it has instead of the short stock, it actually has a piece that goes down by the the trigger. Had they used a machine gun up to this point in the training scene somewhere? Maybe because there, it was a little. It was a little. They're jarring. holding. They're holding them. You never hear them shoot. It was very jarring to suddenly have a machine gun come in at this moment and kind of uh, shoot at Mendez, and Mendez doesn't even really bleed. And I don't know if that's part of the of the, of the mut mutation, a mut mutation thing. But he gets shot. He kind of turns to the side. Right. His hand kind of goes up, and then he kind of tumbles. But you really don't see blood. Blood. You see, maybe yeah, the, right. maybe there's a just hint a of movie it, death, but yeah. not. A, I mean, yeah. A, a, well, I found the machine gun an odd choice because you know the sound of. Mm -hmm. As opposed to just one that echoes, the one chamber. that echoes and it's death. That seems so much more final, especially if you have a splotch of blood right in the heart area. I just found the machine gun to be this. I, I it wasn't even you couldn't even evoke the the Nazi era kind of things you've seen before with mowing down people. And I know it's horrific, but it just it 
didn't even seem final to me. It, it just the, seemed kind of weird. The, the machine gun was almost unnecessary. It could have been just a regular rifle yeah. at yeah, that point. I think it should have been a regular and rifle. And then Mendes just kind of tumbles down the stairs briefly off screen, or tumbles downstairs and off screen, which is starting the, the, the chain of people just, just tumbling downstairs. Out. And be gone forever. <laughs> which apparently is the way you die in Beneath the Plane of the Apes is you have to fall downstairs. I wanted Ursus 